And welcome to Enzyme Mental. I'm Jason Carter. So how much iron should you take? Iron recommendations typically include daily intakes from all sources combined, which include diet and supplements if taken, for people to maintain adequate iron status. They assume the average bioavailability of iron from the diet to be about 18%. For treating anemia in adolescents and women, usually 60 milligrams of elemental iron once or twice daily is appropriate. It should be noted that smaller amounts of hemi iron will be needed to overcome anemia, since the bioavailability of iron from hemi is greater than from other sources. So most intake recommendations indicate the amount of elemental iron one person should take. Unfortunately, prescriptions often specify an amount of an iron compound without saying how much elemental iron is in the compound. As an example of this, a prescription of 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate, which is often the standard dose prescribed, refers to the weight of the entire ferrous sulfate compound, not just the elemental iron in it. Ferrous sulfate contains only 20% elemental iron, so 325 milligrams of ferrous sulfate contains approximately 65 milligrams of elemental iron. Fortunately, most supplemental product labels indicate the amount of elemental iron in the product, so once you've calculated how much elemental iron you've been prescribed, you can just match up that amount with the amount of iron indicated on the product label of the compound you want to take. It's absolutely critical that you know the amount of elemental iron in a compound if you wish to substitute a different form of iron for the one you're taking or the one you've been prescribed. And just a note of caution here about iron, the body has no natural means of eliminating iron excesses once they have been absorbed. So excess iron can cause serious liver and heart problems, and the body's natural reduction in rate of absorption when iron status is high helps to prevent accumulation of excesses, but it's insufficient to prevent iron overload if incoming iron is too great. Adult men and postmenopausal women rarely need iron supplementation. Since iron overload is a concern, men and postmenopausal women should be sure that their multivitamin mineral supplement does not contain iron unless they've been diagnosed specifically with iron deficiency anemia. The source of the problem, which is blood loss, should be determined and corrected. And once you do that, then you can supplement with iron to restore optimal iron status. Iron can also interfere with the effectiveness of certain antibiotics, and also methyl dopa, which is used to treat high blood pressure, levodopa, which is used to treat Parkinson's disease, and bisphosphonates, which are drugs for treating osteoporosis. One example of this is the drug Fosamax. So if you're going to take an iron supplement, really study what I've given you today, and while it's best to try to get your iron from food, if you are going to supplement, maybe start with a very low dose, and there are some food-based forms of iron supplements available, and usually often include things like vitamin C and B12 and folate, which are all the co-nutrients you need to effectively build up the red blood cells. Including iron with these key co-nutrients really helps to enhance its absorption. So maybe look for a food-based iron like that. But if you are going to take iron, please be careful with it. Thanks for watching. I'm Jason Carter, and I'll see you next time on Enzyme Mental. Stay healthy.